Of course, Colorado State off to a 2-0 start after the 33-14 win against Northern Colorado this past week in Fort Collins out at Sunny Lubick Field. It was the 30th annual Ag Day. And, of course, the Orange out, beautiful weather, and it's just fantastic atmosphere uh, out there at Hughes Stadium on Saturday. And, of course, the Ram football team didn't disappoint with a dominating performance over uh, Northern Colorado. And, again, they go to 2-0 on the season. And that all sets up the... Rocky Mountain Showdown coming up this weekend down in Denver at Sports Authority Field at Mile High, Colorado, coming into that game at 0-2 after a tough loss to California this past week, 36-33 in overtime. But certainly it proves to, to be a pretty good test for Colorado State. So we'll talk about last week and look forward with Ram head coach uh, Steve Fairchild. We'll also be joined by CSU running backs uh, coach and special teams coach Larry Lewis. And we'll be joined by a couple of the special teamers here tonight as well as punter Pete Kondodiakis will join us here at the Beach House Grill as well as Ben DeLine. Of course uh, Ben's dad Steve, a former Colorado State Ram and uh, Ben the place kicker for the Rams the last three years the senior from Steamboat Springs California. So it should be a fun show here tonight and certainly you can get involved if you would like to a couple of ways to do it if you're in-house studio audience you can always come up and ask a question to the coach and our in-house mic or you can call Call us at 1-866-702-7691. Again, that telephone number for a comment or a question to Coach Fairchild, 1-866-702-7691. 7691. All right, we'll take our first time out here of the evening when we come back to Coach Steve Fairchild. That's next from Nelligan Sports and the Colorado State Sports Network. Back here at the Beach House Grill on a Wednesday night in rainy Fort Collins, Old Town Fort Collins, for another edition of the Coors Light Steve Fairchild Coaches Show. Well, Poudre Valley Health System is proud to be the exclusive health care sponsor of Ram Athletics with a fast-growing network of health care providers and locations. PVHS is here for you. For more information, visit PVHS. Dot org. Brian Roth back with you along with head coach Steve Fairchild. Steve, congratulations on the 2-0 start and a 33-14 win over Northern Colorado. Certainly, I thought you guys came out and played a fantastic first half of football. Maybe lost focus in the second half, but I thought you played well. Yeah, we really did. The first half was kind of what we think we can be. We were, you know, got off to a fast start offensively, played well defensively, turned the ball over, kicked the ball well. You couldn't have scripted the first half any better. Uh, but again, we're not a good enough football team to lose focus. And I think in the second half, we kind of dropped our guard a little bit on both sides of the ball and, you know, kind of stumbled around there a little bit. But we're happy. We think we took a step forward. Uh, it was a good effort. We've got to keep getting better, obviously. But uh, we're pleased with what happened last Saturday. It's almost human nature sometimes. When you, when you go up, you guys took the initial drive of the third quarter. The Rams were up 28 nothing at half. Right down the field, you kick a field goal and an elongated drive, 31 nothing. I, I just think it's easy to, to, to kind of lose that edge a little bit. Not, not that you're pleased with that, but, but it is human nature. Yeah, it is. And, and you're not, you know, we had scored, I think, on all, every possession but one in the first half. And, and obviously that's not going to continue all the time. But, uh, uh, you know, we didn't put together a nice drive. We got a couple stops defensively. And, and then, you know, like I said, then I think we let our guard down and we're not good enough to do that. I think one of the other factors, perhaps, Stephen, you can comment on this, uh, and, and maybe a, a, a tough second half for your ball club. Mike Sisson, your team leader, goes down with a broken ankle in that first half. Uh, uh, any carryover effect the second half? You know, guys see their leader go down. Does that have any, any effect? Well, I, I think, you know, I, first of all, I feel so bad for Mike. And, you know, he's a tremendous player, but also the things he was doing uh, for our football team off the field and in the locker room. Uh, you know, he's going to be missed. There's no question about it. And, and you can say what you want. When that happened, you could, you could feel the air come out of the stadium a little bit, you know, uh, the fans, uh, our sidelines, and, and so forth. But uh, it's part of the game of football. It's kind of a fluke little deal. I don't even think he got hit. You know, he just planted his foot and uh, got injured. But uh, it's part of the game, and, and we've got to move forward, and we've got to have some guys step up. Yeah, you, you talked about how many snaps at the college level Mike Sisson has been in on it and how many violent collisions that he yeah. has been on, and, and, and it comes down to that. You know, he just plants his foot and gets hurt. But, uh, you know, Mike's been such a productive player every, every one of those snaps. You know, he's, I think he started every game and, uh, since his redshirt freshman year. So uh, he's had a tremendous career, and hopefully, you know, it's a – eight to ten week thing we'll see when he you know he's had surgery we'll see as he starts to rehab but maybe we can get him back here at the tail end of the season i, I remember you telling me I, i'm not sure if it was uh 
I'm not sure if it's the spring or if it's this fall, but you mentioned, you know, you guys get beat at the end of last season to Wyoming. Come back for the start of second semester and the first day of classes. Yeah, Mike, Mike Sisson's in your office. Yeah, Mike was up in my office and just said, I'm not, I'm not going to let that happen. And, you know, he's a strong-willed guy, and, and he's one of those naturally charismatic people that, you know, when he walks into a room, he, he, the room changes. And, uh, you know, so he, he and I had a nice little visit, and he approached this offseason, you know, in, a, in just a unbelievable way, starting with the very first mat drill and all the way through spring ball and, you know, really all the way through our summer workouts. Because you can say what you want. We can organize it. And, and, and you can show up and you, and you can lift, but it, it, when you really are showing up and lifting when nobody's watching you and you're really working hard to get better, that's what good football teams do. And, and uh, Mike was sure a leader throughout the whole year. And I, I think he's as much, uh, 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 he has as much to do with us turning this thing around as anybody. Had surgery on Sunday. Um, don't, actually, don't... actually, I think he, he ended up having a Saturday night. Oh, it was yeah, Saturday I, night. I, I, okay. We all went by and saw him Sunday morning. Some guys went over there Saturday night. I went over there Sunday morning. And, uh, he was out Sunday. That's a quick turnaround. Yeah, yeah. Those guys do a good job. So, um, doesn't look like he's going to get a, get an extra year of eligibility, correct? You know, I don't think so. You know, we'll we'll exhaust every possibility, and I'm I'm not. You know, I don't know the rule to the letter, but uh, you know, if he doesn't, he doesn't. He'll he'll end up continuing his career at the next level. Yeah. So we're looking at what ten to twelve weeks uh, of perhaps recovery time. Again, had the surgery on Saturday night. So uh, when you look at this from a big picture point of view, of the season he still could play for the CSU Rams again yeah, this I'm, year. I'm hoping, you know, like I said, we've got a couple bye weeks in there. There's, you know, 10 games left with two bye weeks. And, uh, you know, this could be as little as eight weeks maybe. So we'll see. You know, obviously we don't ever want to put a guy out on the field that, that uh, is not ready to go out on the field. But if by chance he, you know, he heals that thing and we've got some games left or perhaps a bowl game, then then we'll get Mike Sisson back on the field. Well, a bittersweet win for CSU. They do get the victory over UNC. Mike Sisson, though, looks like he's done for quite a while. We'll talk more about that win over Northern Colorado when we come back here tonight to the Beach House Grill. We're in Old Town, Fort Collins. Time out. From Nelligan Sports, Colorado State Sports Network. Back here at the Beach House Grill in Old Town, Fort Collins. Another edition of the Coors Live. Steve Fairchild Coaches Show. Steve Fairchild Show brought to you by Ford. Ford, a proud sponsor of Ram Football. Go to thinkfordnow.com, then visit your local Ford store and drive one. 1 866 702 7691. Again, that's the telephone number here tonight. If you want to hop on board, 866 702 7691. And for the first time tonight, let's go to those phone lines. And joined by Sean from Fort Collins. Sean, welcome to the program. Hi, Brian. Hi, Coach Fairchild. How are you? I'm doing good, Sean. How are you this evening? Doing great. I just want to congratulate you on going 2-0, and and, and I wish you luck this week against the Buffs. Let's go get that third win and be halfway to bowl eligibility so we can get Sisson back out on the field this year. And I just want to ask you uh, real quickly about the two freshmen. I believe they're both freshman kickers for CU and kind of what you see in CU special teams so far uh, as, you, as you prepare for uh, Saturday's game. And I'll uh, hang up and listen. Well, they are, they are kicking the ball well. There's no question about it. When you look at their special teams, though, the, the number one thing that jumps out is they've got some real speed at their uh, return spots. So anytime a team is that dynamic uh, returning the football, you've really got to work hard on your coverage teams because that's a, that's a play that can change the, the game. They also blocked, an, I believe, an extra point or a field goal. So, uh, you know, they, they do a nice job in the special teams. Uh, you know, we're playing better and better in that area. I, I was sure encouraged with the way Ben and uh, Pete kicked the ball this past week. So uh, it should be, a, should be a good battle. And, you know, the, the thing you don't realize or people don't really uh, realize going into a game is there's so many snaps in that area that it, it really can sway not just yardage but the, the entire game. And uh, if you're punting the ball five or six yards better and, netting five or six more on the return or covering five or six yards better that that stuff starts to add up and can actually swing the game you know in your favor and we hope to do that this saturday sean thank you very much for the phone call again that phone number one eight six six seven zero two seven six nine one and i want to talk more in depth about colorado but first looking back at that uh, that unc game well you got that ground game going pretty good and i thought all three backs played played well for you carter went for a hundred yards with Derek good off the bench with 81 yards yeah you know and we we did not play Derek in the first ball game and and i was glad we were able to get Derek in because he's you know he's going to we're going to need him as the year goes on, and he sure practiced hard and deserved to play. Uh, but Raymond had another good game. He was our offensive player of the week, and 
uh, went for 100 yards. Chris has been really good both bo- or both games. So we're very, very happy with the way our running backs are playing. We, we kind of entered a little bit awkwardly uh, on some runs in that first week, and we, I think we got that straightened out. And uh, there were some encouraging things in, in a lot of areas, but particularly the run game. Have you gotten a, a particular rotation that, that, that you'd like to see as we continue you on? Know, I, I probably should tell you we do, but we don't. You know, we throw Raymond in there first, and then we just go from there. But there are, there are some uh, particular packages that we would prefer Chris or Raymond or Derek to be in on. Uh, but if a guy has a hot hand, it's kind of like uh, we'll know, and we just, we just stay with it. Wide receiver is a lot more involved in the passing game on Saturday. Yeah, we tried to do that. And I, I left Pete in there probably a little longer than I should. Just to, you know, we've got two true freshmen that are playing out there in Charles Lovett and, and Lee Club, and we really think they're, they're talented young kids. And uh, obviously they, their head's spinning a little bit, but they're playing. And uh, I just wanted to get our timing worked a little bit with Pete, and, and we didn't throw the ball a lot. Coverage dictated that in the first game to our wide receivers. You know, we got Joe Brown and, and Crockett and those guys working inside. So... Uh, we saw that in the third quarter as an opportunity maybe to work that part of our game, and I was glad w- we were able to do that. With the true freshmen, and, uh, you know, as you go and you prepare for the teams, you know, first New Mexico, then UNC, now Colorado, uh, are they able to still continue to learn the offense more and more as you go? And with that, will they be able to see more snaps? Yeah, I think they get more snaps as they learn more, and as we practice more, they, they learn better. And, uh, you know, and you, you, you even add Thomas Kaufman into that uh, mix. He's a redshirt freshman. So, uh, you know, there's one thing to know I have a seven route, but to know I have a seven route, what is my split? You know, am I three yards off the numbers? And then what am I going to do if they press me? And, you know, what do I do if the guy's off? And, and what do I do if the safety's over the top? And so, you know, it, it's a little more complex. And, and, you know, the more you do it, the more you see it, the better you get. And uh, that's why that was valuable time for us with those those freshmen in the third and fourth quarter there. One thing you notice about that stat sheet from Saturday's window, 28 completions, and you look at how many different receivers Pete Thomas got the football to. Yeah, I thought, was there 11, I think, uh, 11 different guys that we ended up you know, spreading the ball around to, and we're doing a much better job uh, than we've done in the past to getting the ball to our backs and our tight ends and things like that, and, and part of the reason is that's we have some guys that are very capable there. Our backs are good receivers, and uh, our tight ends and slot kind of guys are, are very capable as well. So, uh, you know, we're, we're if our passing game, you know, it's, it's, it, it relies on protection, timing, you know, all sorts of things. People seeing the coverage the same way. So the more reps we get at it, the better we'll be. Pete's done a good job taking care of the football throughout his uh, first year plus uh, of his career. But the three interceptions on Saturday, going back to the film, what would you see? Well, one was tipped. You know, the, the other one was he, he'll be the first to admit that we've all been there, you know, played that spot he, he let one go and it probably wasn't a half inch off his hand and he knew uh, you know I'm trying to do something here I shouldn't do uh, and then and then we tried one down the middle and I'll blame that on a play call we tried to get one down the middle on a third and ten and the linebacker made a very nice play um, you know obviously with that down distance they're sinking a little deeper and so forth but that's a big part of, of what he's got to do he, you know we want to run the ball we want to take chunks down the field deep in our passing game and we do not want to turn it over and you know, you went on the road. We went down to New Mexico. We won that ball game because we had less turnovers and we had less penalties. Uh, we did not have that Saturday, and, and you know, we were able to win the game. But against a good opponent, that's not going to happen. Yeah, Pete Thomas, uh, 28 of 42 on Saturday, 259 yards and a touchdown, as well as those interceptions. All right, plenty more to come here tonight from the Beach House Grill. But we step away. One eight six six seven zero two seven six nine one. The telephone number. All right, back here at the Beach House Grill here in Old Town, Fort Collins. Courtside, Steve Fairchild, Coach's Show. Brian Rob, voice of the Rams with you, along with Coach Steve Fairchild. 1-866-702-7691, the phone number tonight. Of course, it would not be a Coors Light, Steve Fairchild, Coach's Show if Daryl from Knoxville wasn't involved in the show. So let's keep things on track and go to the phone lines and bring in Daryl. Daryl, how are you? Just great. How are you guys doing tonight? Real good, Daryl. Um, I've got two quick questions, then I'll hang up and listen. Um, first, I'm just curious what you like about this year's team in comparison to the others that you've taken into the showdown. And two, I've, I'm looking at Tyler Hansen. It seems like CU's been able to move him around a lot, use the pocket. Um, and just, I'm just worried, well, what do you think of him moving around? Well, the first one, I think what we take into this game more so than any year since I've been the head football coach is more experience. We've got uh, a lot more guys that have played. Uh, and I also like this football team because I think during two-a-days, uh, 
you know, I think they're playing for each other. There's a little more of a team atmosphere than, than maybe what we had the last couple of years. So it's got a good feel to it. I know they, they're real anxious to, to play for each other and they're very excited about these games. And, and uh, you know, there's no, you have no trouble getting them up in the locker room. They're, they're, they're ready. Uh, as far as Tyler Hansen, he did surprise me. You know, coming off of the, the only time I saw him was in the opener last year. And uh, I, I just thought, you know, I had, a, had it in my mind what type of player he was. And then you throw on the Hawaii tape and, and the Cal game last week. He's a much improved quarterback, and they are doing a nice job with him moving him around on some bootlegs. But I'll tell you, what, what, you, what you see in them is, is that running back and that receiver. They've got, uh, you know, a running back that's very dynamic in the open space and, and probably one of the elite receivers in college football in Paul Richardson. So... Uh, we cannot let either one of those two guys get loose on us or it'll be a long afternoon. Daryl, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Getting back to the point on, on Tyler Hansen, you say he looks a lot better than last year, looks more comfortable. How much of that do you think revolves around the fact that he, he was the guy going into the season and didn't have Cody right. Hawkins behind him? Yeah, there's no question. And, and he played a lot. You know, we saw him in the opener, and then he, he played, obviously, all last season. And um, and then had another spring ball like Pete Thomas and another fall camp underneath his belt. But uh, they do a nice job. And, and like I said, that, that receiver now, when, when he goes, he's, he's something, to, something to watch. So, uh, you know, he's, ca he's capable of scoring at any place, any time on the field. And uh, we're going to have to really have a, a linebackers and DBs and guys bumping him on a route because if you let him run clean, he'll, he'll hurt you. Yeah, you're talking about Paul Richardson who uh, set Colorado – record last week with 284 receiving yards. We, we certainly know he's a good receiver, but if, if you have those type of numbers, was it something that Cal was doing in defense of him, or was he just beating, beating he was just He was secondary? just beating guys. Some of those long, uh, you know, one in particular, he kind of ran a uh, kind of a Pittsburgh Steeler type of route. He ran a kind of an outside stem skinny post, and he was just on, in another gear. Uh, you know, he probably caught the ball 15, 18 yards down the field, but he was playing you know quite a bit faster than anybody else on the field and he just took it and took it all the way in the end zone the other one wasn't a very deep ball at all he just showed again run after catch and uh again if he can find a crease uh, there's not many people on, in college football that are going to catch this guy you know I, I know you're more of an offensive coach but i'll ask you this anyway how much can a wide receiver the caliber of richardson is for colorado adjust the scheme for a defense how, well, they, how much does larry have yeah, to adjust they, for you have to adjust and and it's one of those stats that doesn't, you know, it doesn't register on the stat sheet. But uh, San Diego State's a perfect example. Last year they had those two receivers, and uh, the second you singled them up, they were they were going to hurt you. Yeah. And it wasn't just some of the time; they were going to do it every time you singled them up. So you got two of your safeties over the top of both receivers, so you, they don't they don't hurt you fast. And then they just hand it off to Ronnie Hillman all day, and all of a sudden he looks like the player of the year in the conference. But uh, I'll tell you what, you take those two wideouts off the field and it's a lot tougher sledding for that back. And that's why, you know, balance, you've got to be able to do both. We always try to establish a run, but if we do not develop into a, you know, a passing attack that can get the ball down the field, it makes that running so much tougher on the line in the, in the running back. Again, 1140 is the kickoff coming up on Saturday from Denver. The Rams and the Buffs will talk more about Colorado when we come back here on the Coors Live Steve Fairchild Coaches Show from Nelligan Sports and the Colorado State Sports Network. Well, the rainy night here in Fort Collins, but it hasn't damped for the mood. The 2-0 Rams looking forward to a matchup with Colorado coming up on Saturday, Sports Authority Field. Welcome back, everybody. Of course, you can join the Coach Steve Fairchild here at the Beach House Grill. We're at 125 South College Avenue in Old Town, Fort Collins. We're every Wednesday night from 6 to 7 p.m. for the Coors Light Steve Fairchild Coaches Show. All right, right back to the phone lines. And Kevin joining us from Fort Collins. Kevin, good evening. Good evening, guys. How are you? Doing good, Kevin. How are you tonight? Well, very good. Congrats on 2-0. Thank great you very start, much. Uh, great start to the season. Coach, you kind of already addressed a few of the things I was going to ask you about regarding CU and some of the matchups there, so I guess I'll ask you instead about some of the other major news in college football right now with conference realignment kind of coming back up on the front burner, and one day Texas is going independent, the next day they're going to uh, the Pac-12, and now they're saying ACC might be a third option for them, and who knows what the Big 12 does. Have you been following all this, or do you guys just not have enough hours in the day to well, keep up with what's happening there, and what's your opinion on all these potential moves? All right, you opened up, a, you opened up the bag <laughs> there, and now you're going to give you my opinion. But, uh, you know, it, it, we have been following it because, again, this, this first wave of all this conference realignment, uh, 
happened in May, and, and the rumors persist, and another wave's going to happen again. And, you know, I, I think it's very, very disappointing. Uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get in trouble for this, but I think the BCS is, ruined, or is ruining college football. Uh, I think what you see is a bunch of universities that are, that are chasing a television dollar. And, and I, I, I get it. I mean, I, I know I, I don't sit in Paul Kowalczyk's seat, but I know as an athletic director, finances and running an athletic department are very important. But uh, you cannot discount fans. You, you cannot discount rivalries, heritage, geography, and start saying uh, Texas is, you know, TCU playing in the Big East. T TCU's tennis team is going to go up and play at Syracuse. That makes no sense to me from a financial standpoint whatsoever. So I think there's a lot wrong in college football. I'll say this, I had a chance to be in the NFL. The NFL levels the playing field, and when you level the playing field, it's the best product and it's best for the fans. And I'm not saying that the NCAA can make colleges revenue share like they do in the NFL, but any time they've done any legislation to, to level the playing field in terms of scholarship numbers or how you spend your money, it's been good for the product. It's why Appalachian State can beat Michigan. And, and I think we need to really take a hardcore look at what's going on because there, there's a few power brokers out there that are taking what I think is the greatest game on the planet and they're ruining it and it's sad. Kevin, thank you so much. Appreciate that. And uh, you, know, you know, it's interesting. People, Steve, talk about, well, there's going to be four super conferences and whatnot. To, and yet, yet you're hearing guys like Larry Scott, commissioner of the Pac-12, Pac saying, well, no, I don't, we don't want 16. And, and, and you know, hearing Mike's live down at SEC country, and, oh, we don't want 16. Big Delaney in the Big Ten, no, we don't want it. But yet we're still going that, that way. It, nobody says it's a good thing. I haven't heard one comment no. from anybody that says it's a good thing in the direction but, we're going, but, but we're still going that that's way. That's the problem. It, 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 they know it's not good, but it's financially the best deal. And, and, and like we all know, finances are important, but uh, at the end of the day, if, if the only decision we make in our life is based on finances, then, then we're screwing it up. And, and I think that's what's happening in college football right now. Yep. All right. We'll uh, take a time out and uh, see. Now, now I'm all hot and bothered. I'm upset. It's. <laughs> oh, you did. That's Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that. All right. We're going to get back to the Colorado Buffaloes when we come back from Nelligan Sports. This is the Coors Light Steve Fairchild Coaches Show. We're in Fort Collins here on the Colorado State Sports Network.